Hello there, Virtual Space Hero community. I'm hoping that I find you in a wonderful morning, afternoon, or late night. Why late night today? Because we have a person connecting from Kuala Lumpur, our expert on the show, and I assume there are a lot of her followers also in our audience. Hello there, and welcome to the Virtual Space Hero Show. Today, we are discussing a super exciting topic. You remember that in one of my previous shows, we had Isman Tanuri with us, and he's also one of my favorite Miro heroes, and we were talking about how to use Miro to facilitate with liberating structures. We talked about gamification also already on this stage. And today we're combining gamification and Miro. And we're going to talk about how can we use Miro to gamify our virtual live sessions. And I'm super excited because with me on the show is somebody that I have getting to know better last year because I'm following her on LinkedIn. She is not only a virtual learning facilitator, she helped more than 100 professionals to move to the virtual space, but she's also the creator of a Miro Zing Race. Well, let's see if I pronounced that correctly, but I think the amazing part got lost a little bit in my way of saying it. Neural connecting from Kuala Lumpur. There she is. Hello, Neural. Hi, Barbara. Thank you for having me and a very good day to everyone who's listening and watching us today. <laughs> Nuro, how did that go? The Miro Zing race. I'm not sure if I if I made it correctly because the, there is a, a word game there with a Miro and an amazing, right? Yes, it's a combination of amazing and Miro. So it's a Miro Zing race. <laughs> so it was different. pretty good. It's really good. Yeah, it's spot on. <laughs> uh, Nuro, how was your journey to, journey to become a virtual learning designer and to be such an expert in Miro and gamification? Can you let us know a little bit about your background, please? Yeah, um, yeah. So actually, my specialization is in learning and growth and performance management. And for the past eighteen years, I've been in the organization, either managing a learning department or managing a performance unit. Um, until December 2019, I decided to take a break. Like, I have enough. I just want to take a short break and um, give myself a lot of rest after years of working and traveling uh, here and there. And then COVID happened. So break become break. <laughs> so <laughs> like, I got a job offer, um, however, due to ongoing uh, lockdown in Malaysia. So they keep mum about my offer and I'm like, okay, I cannot keep mom about my living. I need to move on, right? So that's when I discovered the, the world of virtual learning. I mean, I used Zoom before. Zoom is not new to me in 2019. I've been using Zoom and Skype for all the remote sessions already. But it was never a three hours training. It's always a one hour meeting or half an hour briefing or maybe half an hour brainstorming, right? But that's it. So with uh, coronavirus hitting and the pandemic hitting us, so we need to shift to a, a virtual session for training, for brainstorming, for meeting, anything. We, we, we technically work on Zoom. So that's when I attended a training called Virtual Lancaster, where I learned the, the tips and tricks on becoming a better learning facilitator. And that's how my journey started. And then through that course, I came across Isman Tanuri, Joshua Davis, uh, attended their session, learning from them, observing how they do it, and slowly picking up um, uh, from there. And yeah, so here I am today um, after that break. No more break for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because you were saying slowly picking up from them. Dear God, I see so many people there like you who did such a tremendous development. That is anything else but slowly, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, slowly, and then sometimes you run, and then... Uh, to be honest, uh, I didn't realize it's been two years before I start. Um, what do we call in Malaysia? We say bertate, but it means like the baby steps. Yeah, the baby steps. Yeah, so it's yeah, been yeah, two yeah. years. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Miro, um, you also, we're talking today about Miro and about gamification. So you're combining Miro as a platform using a lot of gamification elements. What is gamification for you and why did you start um, using gamification in general? Yeah, so gamification is basically using the games element in a non-games setting, right? So 
it, it could be like having a leaderboard or having uh, uh, challenges or rewards in class. And people love rewards. You know, when we had this face-to-face -face session, sometimes, you know, in Malaysia, people don't like to ask. You know, in a class, they, when I ask, is there any question? And people will say, no, they just look at each other. Is anyone going to ask questions? Because I don't have questions. Or I have questions, but you know what? I'm just going to ask the teacher after the class. So it's a one-to-one -one session. So people don't really ask questions here in Malaysia. So usually what I do is... Um, to gamify the learning session. Okay, whoever asks me questions, I'm going to give you chocolate. And that's when people start asking questions because they want the chocolate because it's getting sleepier. Like it's 2 o'clock in the afternoon, it's hot, I, I'm sleepy. So, so the idea of gamification starts from there in a physical class where I can give chocolate. But in virtual session, I cannot give chocolate. And no way I'm going to tell them, okay, I'm going to give you two ringgit um, food voucher through the <laughs> online apps. like. It's too much work <laughs> I'm not going to do that. So there must be a different way to entice your students to eventually ask questions, participate and engage because learning face-to-face -face and learning virtually is two different games altogether. Mm, yeah, absolutely. So, and uh, that is clear now. So you're also trying to use gamification elements. Can you give us a very, a very short examples on how you do that in the virtual space, for example, to engage students more into the into the Q&A part, into discussions, what are you doing? Okay, I realize, uh, I realize human are curious by nature, right? So um, I like to use the different apps in my learning session just to engage them, so to entice them. And one of my favorite apps is, of, of course, Miro, because there are so many things that you can do using Miro, okay? And the moment I opened Miro, people was like, what is that? I have never seen this app before. So that already triggered a curiosity and they will already like engage a bit. What is this? And then I start teaching them, okay, um, I show them certain parts of it, I do the activity with them and they will start like, whoa, this is super. And the best way to do it, it's not through teaching them a new theory using Miro, no, but the best way to do it is using games. I invite them to play games. So they don't feel like they are learning a new tools, but they feel like I'm playing games. So mm. I forgot about the difficulties of learning a new app because I'm focusing on the games. I want to play this. I want to know how to move from one place to another. I want mm. to know how can I score in this game. So yeah, mm. so I use games. And that is the idea uh, when I created a, a Miro Zing Race. Actually, it was not for a class. It was really for uh, a pack, uh, Miro user group when Isman asked me, do you like the neural culture facilitate the session in Miro? like, Oh my God, what I'm going to do? You know, everyone is doing facilitation. I do not know. I know nothing about liberating structure. Like, man, what I'm going to do, right? But still, I want to do something good. And that's when I feel like, hey, if I can create link in Miro, I can create games in Miro. So, so that's the trigger point. So what is this a Miro Zing race? Okay. So a Miro Zing race, before I, I'll show you the bot after this. Uh, maybe, you know, people, if you listen to it, you cannot imagine race. So I'm going to show it soon, um, the bot. But for now, I just want you to recall the, the TV program, Amazing Race. You watch it, right, Barbara? Amazing Race? It's called Amazing, yeah. It's, it's a called Amazing Race. And it's been running for, I don't know, 32 seasons now. I lost count. But I remember the joy of watching it, the joy of watching people starting from one point, the joy of going from one place to another, solving puzzles, and eventually race to the uh, to the finishing line and make sure they don't get uh, withdrawn from the program, right? So I love that. I love puzzles in the first place. I, I super love puzzles, you name it. And, and I love traveling. So these are my favorite thing, and, and people love doing that. And during pandemic, we, we have to stay yeah. home. We cannot travel. So I'm like how can I bring that excitement of traveling online? So that's when I create a mirroring race. And this is how uh, the bot looked like. This is an upgraded version. So, and I just used this, hang on, a um, few days ago. Yeah. Oh, so let's check this out. Let's check it out. <laughs> okay. So it's, it's, I told my participants, you are going around the world in 75 minutes. Uh, you read a book, right? Going around the world in 80 days. That's, the book oh, that, yeah. that I read, right? So I'm like, okay, instead of 80 days, because it's too long, you're going to go around the world in 75 minutes. So in that 75 minutes, they have to visit 15 different stations. 
and solve 15 different puzzles. So because I came from Kuala Lumpur, so to pay a uh, homage to my own uh, town, so I started the game in Kuala Lumpur itself. And for this particular team building that I ran two, two days ago, the theme is vacation. And the team that uh, the team wanted to do a team building. So I asked them, what is the purpose of this team building? They say, they, I just want them to have fun. They do not know each other because of some restructuring. So, and they work in a different physical location. So they don't meet in the office. So I just want them to get to know each other better. And I want them to have fun. That's what the manager told me. So, okay, fine. We haven't gone for vacation for a long time. The Amazing Race became, team become a vacation. So the first thing they need to do is just to look at the clips. Like, is this you on vacation? Okay, and people immediately can relate, right? Yeah, it's me or it's not me. Okay, put a smiley. If it's you, put a love smiley. And if it's not you, then roll eyes. So immediately you can, people can relate. So this is the power of engagement virtually. You need to give something that people are familiar with that they feel like it's them. And immediately they'll be like, oh, this is cool. That looks like me. Or no, mm. it's not like me, right? Okay. And then I asked them to go to the next location. And this time around, the the they start uh, working together as a team. So, uh, because the, the team that I'm run, I ran the program uh, was Malaysian. So, I want them to feel like they go vacation domestically. So, I choose a different um, vacation spots in Malaysia uh, in every in every single state. So, people don't feel like they, lo they left behind. Like, why don't you put my state? Okay, so mm -hmm. every state is covered. And they need to sort of... Uh, move the character into the space that they choose and then uh, take their own photo and put there. So in this stage, uh, the problem solving starts because not everybody is IT savvy. So people were like, how do I put my head there? How can I cut my head? So they have to teach each other if people are missing. Okay, this is how you do it. Uh, you go here and you go there. Oh, if you really don't know, let me take a photo of you and I'll do it for you. So the team start to ice breaking. Um, in, in that manner. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So, it's, it's really fun. And because uh, some people do not know how to do some stuff, so there's also a guide uh, what you need to do first. In virtual session, I realized the way you give instruction has to be very, very clear. When you, say it, when you say it verbally, you can say, okay, choose a team name. And people will just like, okay, let's choose a team name, right? But the moment you write it down, choose a team name becomes something different to them. They start to ponder it differently as when you say it verbally. So one thing I learned as I create this bot is you need to really choose the right verb when you write the instructions so people know exactly what they need to do. Okay, so, and also it has to be step by step. You have to number it. One, this is what you to do first. Second, this is what you need to do. Third, this is what you need to do. Then mm. people can follow. Yeah, because you cannot assume people understand immediately. So the mm. best way to put it is instructional, A, mm. B, C, D. And it's yeah. fun. I was just talking very recently to a colleague that this is where we very often lose our participants when we send them into these, let's call it breakout rooms, because they are probably right. breakout rooms, right? And that's when we lose yes. them because the instructions are not clear. Instructions are imprecise or instructions exactly. maybe are not even relevant or activities are not relevant. That's when we lose our participants. <laughs> exactly. You know, I've been in the session where the first thing people ask when they go into breakout room, what is it that we're going to do? <laughs> So, so that's dangerous, right? So it, it's very important that instruction has to be clear verbally and in writing. Okay, so I um, see some familiar face there, Barbara. <laughs> yeah, very, <laughs> they, very cool. Yeah, this, this, is, this was taken from Amazing Race 2, but they didn't know that I keep on using their face in my class. <laughs> okay, so after that, they will go to the next destination, and this is where team identity Fantas comes fantastic. in. Fantastic. Let me just ask a question. So, you have yeah. hyperlinked, of course, from one station to the other to station, another. so that people immediately, because that's what I wanted to ask you how do they go from one station to the other? There is a clear hyperlink within the uh, within yeah. the airport. Yeah, and uh, I also make sure to put it in the instruction as well. Once you completed the activity, click the arrow. Yeah. And, okay. and before I start the game, I already explained where do you find the arrow? Because the arrow is so small, yeah. right? So it has to be consistent. Every single destination, the arrow is on the landmark of that particular country that they are visiting. Because I really want people to appreciate when you travel, you go to the landmark. When you travel, mm. you appreciate the culture, you eat their food. 
you know you don't play with your phone you enjoy so yeah. so that's what i'm trying to do as well and yeah actually there are two ways to navigate a mirroring race one is there's an arrow but in some station they really need to find that particular country because hey this is a puzzle and amazing race you should be able to find where the countries are for example when they solve the jigsaw puzzle they need to figure out the landmark and i make sure to use a uh, the more famous one like taj mahal yeah, okay, okay. Um, uh, mount fuji so these are a lot these are the the common tourist spots in southeast asia and this is where they need to figure out the country and go to that particular uh, landmark. So this is mm -hmm. where the team, if they don't know, they need to do research. Mm -hmm. They need to Google and they need to know how to use Google image search. And most of the time, one person in that group has visited the country at least. Oh, I know that place. I've been to Taj Mahal. And yeah. they will figure out. And fun thing in Miro, people will get lost, Barbara. People will definitely get lost. And people was like, where do I go in Taiwan? Is it going up? Is it going down? Is it left or right? Where am I? I don't know. So in team building, this is also important that you do not leave anyone behind. So this is where you have to, to sort of look for your team member. Where are they? How do you find them? Do you use the follow feature in here? Up there in Miro, there's a follow feature. Or... You just find the cursor. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's pretty amazing, yeah. And so the, they were going through how many stations in 75 minutes? 15 stations. So one station oh, uh, budgeted around five minutes. There will be stations where they take longer time because, like, for example, this one, they need to draw. I, I really want them to use every single tools in Miro. So draw. Okay, fine. Use time to draw. Use shapes to to come up with the country flag. Because you, you visit a country, you should know at yeah, least yeah. what are the animals around here, what are the flowers around here, how does the flag look like, <clears throat> um, something like that. Yeah, so... And what is then if they go through these, um, so you use it as a team building and that's how you gamify the learning for a team, for example. In yes. Team building, what would you be doing afterwards? Um, is it the, the, the there's probably a debrief or reflection session on the different aspects of teamwork? How do you do that? There is. Okay. So first, the last station is where, because when people do my games, they'll be like, how, how do I know if I win? Okay, fine. So the last station is where they will put their team mascot yeah, And they know straight away whether they are winning, right? So after the session, then only, okay, uh, congratulations, uh, you win. Even if you're uh, on the last spot, you still did a great job. And then we will start um, debriefing, depending on the goals of the, of the games. Because sometimes it's really um, like two days ago, they just want to have fun. So, okay, so do you have fun? Mm -hmm. Right and and uh, luckily, luckily for me, they really had fun and they put on the sticky notes in the this one station before this that they had fun. So the managers immediately see, oh yes, they actually claim that they had fun. So the goals are met. Uh, but in today team building, the goal of the the goal of the session is really about uh, problem solving and giving feedbacks. So like. The one that I showed you is a lot of vacation um, activities where they solve puzzles, they get to know the country. In today's team building, I actually put in a different location a quiz using Google Form, attach mm -hmm. a quiz, and the quiz is about leadership. So they're talking about seven habits. So in one station, they have to arrange what are the seven habits. And the next station, they will answer questions about how do you apply first thing first? How do you mm -hmm. apply be proactive? And another station, another quiz, and they're talking about values. So they don't feel like they are doing exams. Instead, they feel like they are playing games. Nobody talk about exams. People are talking about games after that. But still, we do debriefing like, okay, what happened in the breakout room? How come uh, you do not know how to do certain things? And I realized what, as I go from one breakout room to another, some of them didn't read the instruction properly. They just keep because they are ad on adrenaline rush. I just want to complete the game. So, <laughs> so that is one thing that I debrief and give them feedback. I noticed that some of you uh, didn't do the, the, the test properly because you did not read the instruction. And they were like, yeah, I didn't notice that there's one to three. I mean, clearly there's one to three, four. But, you know, sometimes people are just so competitive, like, let's just get this done. 
Fantastic examples. And I love the way you also um, um, sort of continue with the debrief afterwards, of course. So one question here, if you um, use this as a one and a half hour activity on um, on a gamification element about leadership, for example, is one and a half hour a long activity or is it is this um, a shorter activity that you do? Because, for example, my breakout room activity is to reflect. They're usually shorter and one and a half hour is a very long one for me. What is your perception on how does it work with um, such a long time? Um, when I... Um, okay, the client requested for a four-hour team building. So I have to stretch the games into something long, one and a half, uh, it's 75 minutes, right? So there are, there are situations where the clients ask for only one hour. So if it's one hour, then I need to adjust the game so that it has less station and the yeah. engagement is one hour. But I don't recommend Amazing Race to be more than 75 minutes or 80 minutes. Because okay. one is too long and people get bored. And one of the things that I teach in my Game Hero 5 session is when you do a game design, you must make it short enough that people feel that it's not enough. Not mm -hmm. too long that people feel bored. You need to stop before they feel bored. Mm -hmm. So if Absolutely. you're planning for a one hour session or you, you're planning like, oh, the game should be one hour, stop at 45 minutes. Or the game should be 75 minutes, you should stop at 60 minutes. Uh, from my experience, the, the fast teams can actually finish within 60 minutes. For mm -hmm. 15 stations, they can finish in 60 minutes. But there will be team that is slower, and these are the ones that will spend, I think I had to, to add on like 10 minutes on top of 75 minutes just to accommodate the last one. And I want them to finish because this is a leadership program. I cannot say, okay, you know, come back to the breakout room because they will feel frustrated, they will feel demotivated, and they will immediately be disengaged in any mm. other discussion after that. So with that in mind, give them time while I chat with the team that has finished uh, early. Bring them to the main room, have a conversation with them and tell them, I have another group that is not yet finished. Let's give them another extra time so that they can complete the game just like you and they understand. Mm -mm -mm. Fantastic. And you already mentioned you are running that Gamerify session. So everybody out there who is interested, um, connect with Neuro on LinkedIn because she's running a Gamerify session that might be very interesting for you to join to learn more in depth about gamification and using Miro for it. Neuro, yeah. you have uh, many other boards. Is there any other board that you would like to share with us or a gamification element or board that you created and for what purpose was it? Yes. Okay. So that's another that's another uh, board that uh, my students uh, love to take. In fact, they are the one who asked me, Nuro, can we use your board for onboarding? And I'm like, okay, since you asked, and I might as well just put it on the mirror verse so you can use it anytime. You don't have to ask from me. So that board is called Popping Hello. So what is Popping Hello? Um, I noticed sometime in a in a session, clients say, Nuro, you have two hours to do team building, and which means I don't have time to onboard my students properly. In Miro, you need to teach your participants how to use the app first before you can get them to run around. Because most of the time, people will get lost in such a huge board. Because you see an infinite board, right? There is no boundary whatsoever. So people feel intimidated and overwhelmed, especially if they're not mm -hmm. tech savvy. But even with a tech savvy person, they wouldn't know what to do if you don't teach them. So mm -hmm. if Let's say I have only two hours to do my uh, one hour of 75 minutes team building. I will, I will let the participant do um, their own onboarding, uh, which means I give this board as a homework. So in mm -hmm. popping um, hello, um, you have so indication. just again here to clarify those of you who would like to use it go to mirror.com the mirrorverse you find google for popping hello or google yeah. for neural and you find that um, template to be used in your virtual, virtual session right right thank you um i even write the email for you so if you are doing this as a homework the email is there just copy paste and <laughs> just put in the wow. link of your board yeah so, um, yeah, so in this board, it's self-explanatory. So there's an introduction to Miro. What is Miro about? The, all the menu bar is here. And then how do you start? There's a link to start. And then um, there's an instruction. Like, first, you need to know how to use a sticky note. So there's an icon of sticky notes. 
and then use tags. There's an icon for tags um, where they need to write. And then use pen, how to draw a cat. I love uh, to ask people to draw a cat because it can look like cat and sometimes it look like rat. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's really fun to, to, see, uh, to see what it comes out with. This one looks like an elephant, but okay. The most important part is they're doing it and they had fun. And typically, I'll get them to put uh, their favorite song because when the session happened, I do not have to find a song anymore. I can just play the song that they love and they enjoyed it because uh, they they listen to something that they love, right? And finally, and that is so powerful, Nuro, what you're mentioning here with the music because you know that I do I play a lot, a lot around with music in my virtual events. I always have my own DJ with me and also nice. in the Global Case Study Challenge in our big... Um, virtual exchange project we have 600 students and we wow. have them create the or their own spotify playlist that was an idea from my colleague anna and it's super lovely because what we did then in the breaks we always used their own spotify yeah. playlist yeah and they feel good right because they contribute to to those uh entertainment and and they love it straight away so this is again another tips of engagement right barbara yeah <laughs> use absolutely. something that people love great so, so that's it. And the last one, it can be a photo or it can be an icon or um, or a smiley face, anything. The most important thing is um, this is the basic tools that I usually use in any games or any training session. So once they finish doing this, they feel good because they learn something new. And during the class, I just show it to them that, hey, this is the tools that you're going to use as a refresher. Let's look at back at your homework. You've done this. It's a good job. So today, you know what to do and something like that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And if, let's say, the participants are not so active savvy uh, and I just want them to use a sticky note so the onboarding then becomes simple. I just teach them how to double-click the sticky notes, type in it, and that's it. Mm -hmm. They do not have to use anything else. So they do not know to know or to be onboarded into other tools. Yeah, and that popping hello, for example, is that something that you use asynchronously or synchronously on the day of the training? Both. You can either sign it a day ahead or two days ahead for them to practice. Or if you have more time, like when I have a four hours team building session, I do it in the class. Do it together with them and, and guide them uh, with you. So it can be used for both uh, asynchronous or synchronous, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what is your experience? Because I was just recently also talking with a colleague and we were designing a, a very lovely learning journey. But what my experience very often is um, that if I assign activities or tasks before training, meaning before they get to know me, uh, uh -huh. or the trainer, whoever, I feel it hard to get participants really to do the things um, beforehand. So I usually only assign those um, elements after they got to know me, after I engaged them or motivated them with the topic and so on. What is your experience with that? Is it different if you use Miro? Uh, well, um, for my Gamiro file, because we have a WhatsApp group, oh no, I actually signed this way before I passed the group. So what I did was I sent an email, welcome to the Welcome to the program and my name is Rul, blah, 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 blah. In order for you to, to join, you have to do the homework. And then I create a WhatsApp group. So in the WhatsApp group, then I send a reminder. Hey, have you done your homework? If you've done your homework, let me know. And then they will say, yes, I'm done. Okay, great. Uh, five star for you, you know, all these emojis and GIF. You know, and people like yeah. that. And at some point, they were like, no, Rul, I've done my homework too. Can I have my star? <laughs> I'm like, okay, yeah. star for you. So, so yeah, but you're right. It's, it works better when we already engage with them, when they know you and they are more comfortable of doing it. So, so that, that could be a strategy as well. They, they, do, they are more committed when they know what's in it for them and who are the ones assigning it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Great. Thanks for sharing this as well. So uh, uh, maybe a few last, uh, one last question or two last questions um, before we close off today's virtual space hero show here. Um, you showed us already a few boards. I have also seen one board that uh, you mentioned before. It was Alice in the Wonderland, right? Yes. Would you like to talk about that? What is the purpose of it and how you designed it? And what were sort of also the um, elements, the game elements, the structure or the design that you considered when it comes to Miro? Okay, right. So I created Alice in Wonderland for my Gamiro 5 class because half of the people who attended my first Gamiro 5 class, they've done amazing, amazing, a Miro Zing race bot. So I'm like, I could not make them 
go through the same board because there's no fun anymore. So I created this for them. And when I created this, I just, I have just watched Alice in Wonderland movie again. Like that's like a movie that I can watch like over and over again. So the idea before uh, with Alice in Wonderland is I really want people to experience the movie. So mm -hmm. the, the sequence of the activities are just like the movie. Okay, so typically in team, in team building, I want people to put their photos. Okay, fine. So just put the photos and I make sure that I put the Alice element there like the clock, the white rabbit, and uh, the trees because in the, in the movie, she started at the trees. You know, she fell asleep under the trees. And then mm -hmm. I want to have, I want people to really feel going down the rabbit hole. So I put all the elements following the sequence in the movie, you know, um, everything that she experienced when they went through uh, down the rabbit hole. And then they meet Dodo <laughs> and yeah. the story of Oyster, right? So the activity has nothing to do with the story, but the environment, the feeling that people go through when they experience the bot is they feel like they are in Alice in Wonderland. Uh, all the waters, you know, when she went into the key, there's a key and she went into the door and she floats, uh, she just swim and that's when she, she met all those animals. And then the next one is, uh, again, puzzles, but puzzles with the elements in the element, like the, the cats, the roses, the parties and, and things like that. Activities can vary. In this, there's a lot of riddles. And the riddle's yeah. answer is also something in the Alice in Wonderland because I really want people, again, to experience Alice in Wonderland, the Cheshire Cats and things like that. Um, another puzzles. Um, there's a reading room that uh, actually based on Matt Hatter's uh, tea party. Um, and yeah, this, yeah. Uh, this reading room, for example, what is it based on? Like what uh, theory or what topic is there behind the whole um, Alice in Wonderland board? Uh, one of the things that uh, when we build rapport, we look for something that we can relate to. So one of the things that people can relate to is, are we reading the same books or are we watching the same movies? So in team, when people see like, hey, you watch Loki too. Yeah, I love it. No, I don't like it. Oh my God, I hate it when Loki do this and whatnot. So they start having that conversation about the movie that they like. So in, when you get to know people, uh, people will talk about something that they they that they love. So I, I find that books and movie is a good conversation starter and something that they can talk uh, fast. So that is the idea behind the reading room. Mm -hmm. Just to find something that you're familiar with and in team. Yeah. And this mirror board in general is also a team building board, correct? This is a, this is a, yeah, this is sort of a team building or team activities board. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With a lot of puzzles, but of course, this one can be adjusted depending on the client's request. But this one is because it's my own class, and I just put puzzles because they need to learn how to use a different element in Miro to eventually create their own activities. Yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, that's it. So, in the end, uh, there's also a story like they watch movie together and create their own story. So, so one of my students actually um, is teaching storytelling. Like, how do you structure your sales pitch using stories, right? We are mm. talking about a story, like my friend was doing a sales story selling or some a story selling, that he called it story selling. So mm -hmm. based on this, when he looks at this, like, that is a good idea. I can actually get my participants to, to do the sticky notes activity just to structure their thought when they want to do a story selling. So, so yeah. Amazing, amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much, Nero, for sharing that. I think that, well, it, it is only left to say that don't miss out to connect with Nero and follow her on LinkedIn because she's always sharing very interesting examples. And also her Gamero Fire workshop is something that I definitely will join very soon. Um, I love the ideas that you bring here and the creativity as well. Nero, do you yourself has, but how did you get into the topic of gamification? Because I think sometimes I hear that people are struggling with that. I don't have an idea idea on how to um, include some gamification element what would you suggest reading into or watching what would you be your um, suggestion here mm. i like to go back to like why games in the first place right because as a students i like to play 
I'm never serious in class. But I realized that I learn the most when I when when I when I'm having fun. That's the idea. People learn the most when they're having fun, when they are comfortable and they are, uh, they they feel at ease. So when you want to do games in class, just think about how can you make this fun. What will make me? Uh, what will make me? Uh, how how will I myself love to play? Something like that, you know. And I always go with something that is super simple. It doesn't have to be super difficult because when super difficult, you drop the idea yourself. Start in yeah. my class. I always say start with a crazy idea. It it can be as crazy as whatever you know. It can be out of the world. It's okay. It's just an idea, and then you write it down. And then you write mm. it down, and then uh, visualize how you want to do it, and then start doing a storyboard. First, uh, I call it a, a player's journey. Where should this person go first, and then what should they do, and and whatnot. So, so start with that. If 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 you really like to start, I guess start playing games yourself, just to get an ideas, or start watching movies, or start observing how people have fun, mm. or even emulate. Emulate the game, like if you like Monopoly, which part of Monopoly can you bring into your class? If mm -hmm. you like chess, what which part of chess you like to bring into your class? Dungeon and Dragon, oh my God, there's a Dungeon and Dragon board in a Mirrorverse. If you really do not have an idea, <laughs> go to Mirrorverse and see what kind of games people put in there, and it's it's super amazing. And Dungeon and Dragon is something that I saw on Mirrorverse, and I think one of these days I might as well just go and play it. <laughs> Yeah, and I think this is a very good um, also a call to action also to finish. Yes. Don't miss out the universe. I must say I love creating boards, but to be very honest, we also know that creating a board just takes a very long time. Yeah. And it's always, it's an ongoing process. All my boards that I created, I continue developing them. Yes. And so sometimes, for example, it is just easier for me. I go to Mirrorverse and I yeah. check out the different sports that are, that are already there. I build on them. Sometimes I just use them as they are. Sometimes I I use elements also to get a few um, ideas, no? Yes, agreed with you. Sometimes I just go there to, okay, I need ideas. I'm so stuck. Just go and marvel at it. I'm like, oh, you know what? I'm just going to sleep on it and tomorrow I'll come back and do it again. Okay, fine. <laughs> Fantastic. Neural, it was a tremendous pleasure to follow, uh, to, to follow, it is a tremendous pleasure to follow you on LinkedIn, to have you here with us on the show. And when is the next Gamerify session? Do you already have one planned? Yes, the next session will be on uh, 25th of September and October 2nd. Um, it, it, it's on the uh, two consecutive Saturdays, so I'll be more than happy to have you guys coming in and, and join me and learn the art of gamifying your learning session and make it fun because you love fun and people love fun yeah fantastic so connect with neural on linkedin she is tagged also in this um in this podcast in this stream here or in this show here and um i'm really happy to to follow you to continue following you because it's a very interesting conversation and follow also the miro apac group right because really great events um what joshua and isman are doing there yeah and with that neural thank you so much for being with us and um i hope i see you very soon maybe here on the stage again and with that i'm leaving you to the virtual cocktail backstage i'm i'm there in a second with you thank you so much Rora. thank you for having me i really enjoy my time uh, here with you sharing and i hope that i've shared something beneficial for everybody to at least get started with thank you very much you will see that more people will watch your boards definitely i love the popping hello thank you very much bye neural bye Thank you very much, Virtual Space Hero community. You provided me with your questions already beforehand. I tried to put them all into the conversation and to weave them in with them in. It was a great conversation and we will continue to talk about gamification in virtual or hybrid learning settings. Next week, our journey on the LinkedIn Live show here goes to a slightly different topic. We're going to talk um, with John Lee from the Work Together Anywhere team about how to work together from anywhere. And with that, I'm wishing you a beautiful morning, afternoon, evening, or a good night. I'm going off to the lake because I'm currently here in the south of Austria, enjoying um, still summertime and beautiful weather. And with that, I'm leaving you and I hope I see you next Thursday, same time same place and don't miss out to check the youtube channel where you find all the previous sessions and subscribe to it become a virtual space hero bye